There are times when we want to know not the simple frequency of a count, not the percentage, but rather the cumulative frequency in a distribution. Let's imagine that we are promoting a concert and the venue has 1,000 seats. That means we need to sell 1,000 tickets in order to sell out the show. The first day, we sell 200 tickets. The second day, we sell 200 tickets. The third day, we sell 200 tickets. We don't really care so much about how many tickets were sold each day as much as we care about how many tickets have been sold total. What does it all add up to? This is a question of cumulative frequency. We have sold 600 tickets over the first three days. And that leaves us with 400 tickets remaining that have to be sold before the concert. Cumulative frequency is the number of scores at and below a particular score. Let's take a look at this still rather raw frequency table to see how the cumulative frequencies work. We can see how many dogs own one toy, how many dogs own two toys, and how many dogs own three toys. But our cumulative frequency would be how many dogs own three or fewer toys. The number of scores at or below three is 12 out of 50. That is our cumulative frequency. And of course, anytime we have a raw score, we can divide that by the total number of scores to create a cumulative percent. The cumulative percent would be 22% of dogs own three or fewer toys. And of course, when you get to the last number in your frequency table, it will always have the same cumulative frequency as your sample size. How many dogs own 20 or fewer toys, with 20 being the highest number in our data set? 100%. All 50 dogs own 20 or fewer toys. Frequency distributions often work well compared with other graphs. For instance, a histogram. In this histogram, we are displaying the daily number of new cases of a particular virus that is going around. This might begin to look familiar. As we add new cases, we will see an increase in the cumulative frequency. Notice that the y-axis for the histogram and cumulative frequency are very different. The y-axis for new cases runs up to around 30, whereas the y-axis for total cases adds up to around 1,000. In the first day where there's five or six or 10 new cases, there is a slight increase in the cumulative frequency. But as more and more cases are added, the slope of that cumulative frequency line increases. The cumulative frequency line graph is plotting these values in an ascending pattern, meaning that we will never have a cumulative frequency line that goes down it can only flatline. Let me illustrate for you with adding new cases and let's see what happens to our cumulative frequency line. When new cases are being added at an increasing rate, we see that the cumulative frequency line is concave going up. The steepness of the line indicates the addition of new cases. On the other hand, when new cases are being added at a constant rate, we will see a straight line. When cases are decreasing, however, the cumulative frequency will still go up, but by a much smaller margin. And ultimately, when no new cases are added, the cumulative frequency line will flatline. Now we have a little clearer idea how cumulative frequency and histograms can work together and we can choose which type of graph we want for our particular data. Next, we're gonna learn about a stem and leaf diagram.